All right, now the Nigerian curriculum or the Nigerian education curriculum is designed to provide students with um, the foundation they need to be successful in a variety of careers. However, the job market is constantly changing and the skills and knowledge required for many jobs have evolved over time. Whether or not our curriculum can put food on the table of Nigerians today is a complex question with no easy answers as um, there are many factors that contribute to food insecurity including poverty, inequality, conflict and political instability. However, one way the curriculum can help put food on the table is by providing students with the skills and knowledge they need to be productive members of the economy. This includes teaching students about agriculture, nutrition and food security. It should also include teaching students about entrepreneurships and job skills. In addition to the academic curriculum, there are several other factors that can contribute to employability, such as extracurricular activities, internship and work experience. Extracurricular, um, extracurricular activities can help students to develop skills such as leadership, teamwork and problem solving, while internship and work experience can provide students with the opportunity to gain hands-on experience in their field of interest. So today we're uh, referring to Governor Francis Inwifiru. Inwifiru, <laughs> right? Inwifiru's comment on education and employment in his interview and we're asking can our curriculum put food on the tables of nigerians today now please let's hear what you have to say remember you can join the conversation send us an sms or whatsapp to read one eight zero three four six six three so i mean this is a very interesting conversation to have because again i think it was wednesday last week we had a conversation around uh what's it called the skill for today the skill for now mm -hmm. how we want in all of those skills and on tuesday <laughs> <laughs> we face gen, gen people, or the gen, you know, how it seems like um, everybody is just the hustle culture, everybody just wants to make money and they yeah. don't care how to make money. So when I hear a governor talk about this, it, it gives me some level of excitement. It means that he understands that there is a knowledge gap, there's a skill gap, there is a huge gap in our educational system. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we really want to look at Nigeria today, right? Um, what are the things that would put food on the tables of people? Like literally, what would give? What is that job that you can do that you are guaranteed daily job? I mean, daily food on your table. Mm -hmm. I can bet you that those jobs, right, don't really have a particular curriculum in the universities today, or you know, even the technical schools that are available, they're a bit, you know, not so up to par. Yeah. Because you see, outside of this country. I was talking to a friend of mine how he said that you know they went to a furniture company in Canada and they wanted to put together their furniture or more they tried try try no work they wanted because they were trying to boycott mm -hmm. by the time the company that sold them the furniture sent their their um, guys to come and install it prom, 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 and just give you a bill back <laughs> you know <laughs> outside of this country people respect um, Skill. skills handymen are the most like literally that's why you see a lot of diy they don't do diy because they just feel like doing diy it's because for you to be labor able to is get, expensive yes, labor is expensive so if we really want to solve the problem of putting food on the tables of nigerians today right the curriculum must reflect it we must begin to have school of plumbing do you understand school mm -hmm. of plumbing just go there Maybe you do your one year or two years, you come out, there's no kind of, what's it called, um, plumbing issues that you don't have. And that kind of course is not the one that you come out and they'll be charging you 2,000 naira. Do you mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. Like, let us begin to attach some level of, um, what's the word now, um, respect to those kinds of job roles. Relevance. Because yeah. those are the jobs that will put food on the table. So, to your question, can our curriculum put food, if it is the curriculum that we have to do? Mm. He's saying no, but let me hear your thoughts. <laughs> well, first of all, I have to applaud Governor Wifiru because right now the amount of work, I mean, being that I was in the East and, you know, I've listened to conversations and a lot of people have made, accus I have accused this governor of like putting his own people, like family members and stuff mm -hmm. in power. And so the question is, while people, 
you I mean we can argue about that but that's not the point i'm trying to make the question right now is is he working a lot of people in the Bonny state are happy their governor is working while Anambra and Enugu and other states are struggling over state, right now Ebony State has one of the best roads in the in the southeast, mm -hmm. right? And the man is he puts his own people. Okay, big deal. But he's working. And the fact that he also came up with this thing, because I completely, just like you said, I completely agree with him. Right now, is formal education still relevant in Nigeria? No. It is. Because it, 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 is it? It oh, oh it, it, well, my <coughs> argument is, is it is not. Education still if, if formal is formal education, like carry your bag, go to university, study computer engineering, whichever one it is, carry your bag and come out. Is it still relevant? Ah. My answer is no. Except we value that formal education, given the Nigeria of today. If you go abroad, then carry that your degree and come back. That's when there is value to it. Because right now, the real people who are making the money are skilled people whether you go to an official uh, uh programming school which is for computer mm -hmm. people interested in gadgets and tech or you go to a sewing class which is for designers or you go to maybe a plumbing class or maybe a master class on like you don't even have to know the basics of education just have the talent know that i'm passionate about this and go and follow your talent these are the people making the money even as little as how to sell in your local market and make money or how to sell market on instagram mm. you know so these are the educations that we need these days because mm. how many do you know how many millions of nigerians that have gone through school and came out with first class and at the end of the day they still in Ibo would say totolola cha they don't have like mm. Pick and chop, they don't get. Mm. <laughs> you know, so that's my view. Um, mm. Practically speaking, formal education is as good as dead, except to increase our standards and respect for, except to increase our standards and value for formal education. If we don't do that, then it's as good as dead right now. Mary, do you agree? I think I think formal education is the very basic mm. and it is very necessary if you look at people who have gone to um i think polytechnics is the one for like skills and everything and if you look at someone who did formal education you would always see a difference so in as much as yes in as much as yes we need to um what's the word or how do i put it we need to like you said, a plumbing school. Bridge, so you need to, yeah, you need to bridge the skill gap, which is basically transforming um, what the Igbo people do in the Abba market, which apprenticeship, apprenticeship yeah. and um, all of that. You just need to make it m more refined and defined, you know, so there's a proper, you know, level one to this, level two to that. But formal education is still very much important. Maybe because I went to um, private school um, from elementary to university, that's why I can say that. And my university is a Nigerian university, despite it was pri it's private owned. Um, I first heard about entrepreneurship from my university. They were very big on that. Um, public speaking and even um, skill, they had a lot of skill. Um, so. Let, let me let me help you, Mary. Yeah. Because today I saw a report that says your university, Covenant University, and that's where you went. Yeah. To, is one of the best universities right now in Nigeria. Um. So in the in the scheme of in the grand scheme of things, Covenant University is a drop in the ocean. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. The impact. So when we talk about educational curriculum, right? Some of those kind of schools just exempt them because. Um, they are actually doing well and they are doing the right thing. But the bigger picture for the educational curriculum, right? I think it's where the And the question is how many people can afford Covenant University? Mm. I cannot well, my parents going. cannot afford it. No, no yeah. but let her finish. Let her finish. Go but ahead. then for you to now say that formal education is not because if you're going to maybe leave the country or compete globally, mm -hmm. what are you going to show for it? So, the question with what's the question again? The question, the question is, is that can the, our curriculum, curriculum put food on our table? Today? No, it cannot. Mm. But I would say that we need to restructure. Yeah, yes. formal education is still relevant, and it would be nice for it to be 
restructured to our modern day and time. And what are we talking about? We have the internet now, which has really helped to bridge a lot of skill gap. Mm. So, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry to cut you. Formal education, I learned mathematics. I don't see the only relevance of mathematics in my life right now is to count money <laughs> and for angle navigation when yeah, I'm well, driving. Well, maybe, well, maybe, well, maybe, maybe, should, maybe we should, maybe we should, maybe we should try not learning mathematics. You know, All right. <laughs> if you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out and we're discussing the topic, can our curriculum put food on the tables of Nigerians, right? Taking a cue from what um, the governor of Ebony had said. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 01 Our phone line is now open. The number to call is 70 That's the number to call. All right, so before we went on the break, I said, something should not be talking because the, the only reason you are sitting on this chair today is because you studied English. If you did not study English in the university, you would not be able to speak no. English. No, oh, I don't go there. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, I, before I even, English was not even in the picture. It was law that was in the picture. Mm. I had learned, I had prepared myself to speak English, right? From Bani and okay. friends. Hey, so, from watching TV. Yeah, so let me so, so, so let me now get back to, mm -hmm. I want to shade Mary now. <laughs> so when Mary said that formal education is very basic and is very necessary, and I want to tell you that formal mm -hmm. edu education, it doesn't have to, you don't need to get to university to get a formal education. If we had, no, listen, if we had a solid uh, primary school education, it's enough for people. Some people said, okay, you want to now stretch in secondary, secondary school. school. Because even if you check your... I think I'll your, say secondary school. No, no, no. I'm telling you, primary. Why do you see that your your politicians, they, they say it's basic school certificate now, the primary school certificate. Mm -hmm. That's all they need to be able to go into power. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I get the argument where Sanzi is coming from. But you see, let me come back to the universities that I said, because I, I found the report. It says Covenant University, University of Ibado, and Federal University of Technology, that's FUTA mm -hmm. in Akure, have secured top ranking in Nigeria according to Times Higher Education 2024 rating. Although, now listen, though the um, Covenant ranked first in Nigeria is 801 in the 801 to 1000 range in globally mm -hmm. do you understand that's to tell you that you see there's still a huge Kubina might be like a shining star in the midst of the whatever is happening mm -hmm. but you see if you want to put it where global um, um standards, standards are it's nowhere near because why if you look at the curriculum of education around the world it has completely changed mm -hmm. it's no longer a thing and that's why you can see somebody just go and study blockchain as a, as, as a course in university, somebody can just go and study, you know, so it's like literally they've been able to separate, streamline it. If this is the skill that you have, you understand? Let's develop Let, Let's it. develop that skill. And I think that's where I think the governor is going towards, you know. And mm -hmm. if we truly looked at the problems that we had, I think even at some point, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, whilst he was vice president of this country, said this same thing. That in fact, at some point, they were even trying to give incentives to people that will study certain courses. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? We have a housing deficit in this country. So we need, and I'm, I'm very happy that Akure University of Technology yes. made it to the list. Because this, those are the kinds of schools right now no, that don't. we don't really need. We need technical schools to but wake now up. The problem, Owa, is that now universities, like proper federal mm. government universities or private universities, there is this tendency to always look down on Polytechnic. I know, but you see all those things. If the government now pays the attention, the standard of the polytechnic is not. It's dropped. Not so if, imagine if the government so, decide to take those kinds of what's it called bull by the horn mm -hmm. and upgrade those kind of schools. Because what we need are technical schools. We have problem of, for instance, poor planning. Yeah. We have drainage problem in our country. We have gridlock problem. We have bad roads. We have yeah. all of those things. Is it because you go and study law that will solve that problem? Do you understand? Or is it because, you're, you know, we need to be able to start churning out as many handy men, technical and also, guys, I think engineers and all of that. Putting the, the idea, um, putting the interest in people's minds, it will be the first stage, first of all, because um, I think such um, skills are looked down upon mm -hmm. because you hardly find successful people no you know why it's looked down that, upon let me that, tell you why um, many years ago when the shopping mall when they started this 
um, chain of shopping malls around yeah. Nigeria. I remember the very first mall that was built, the Palms, that was built in Lagos. That was the very first like standard shopping mall. Yeah. You know. I remember the story I heard was they imported the uh, what's it called? The interlocking guys. They were living in a penthouse somewhere, you know, and all of that. They imported them and they were paying them hard end forex. But go and look at what they did many years ago. Does it still stand? Do you understand? So it's two things. It it's, it's not it's not too good. Doesn't it still stand? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to tell yeah. you. It stands because first of all, it's two things. Yeah. They understand the expertise to be able to get that because they've gone. It's a skill that was acquired, you know, in a proper way. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the, the 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 job, you know, the pay and all of those things, it was also respected. You know, the pay was respected because again, they were foreigners. If you you understand in Nigeria, for instance, say tomorrow you want to become a plumber, they cannot pay you what they are paying somebody on the street. You know why? Before you became a plumber, you would have gone to because of your pedigree, you'd have gone to different kinds of maybe international plumbing schools yeah. and all of that. Yeah, so I fine. think again, if we start to attach some level of importance to the skills that we have, it would attract the pay. You understand? It's not it's not enough for you to say, Oh, and because I'm Nigerian, they're not paying me. No. If I if I can command that kind of uh, pay, they would pay me that money. Mm. Do you understand? Imagine mm. if I go to Harvard to go and learn how to do plumbing. But is it is it the same money you want so to pay? <laughs> for me, I'm looking at it. If I was to hire someone mm. right now, I think. Okay, let me finish making the first point. If I was to hire people right now, what I would look out for is character. I'll look out for passion, and then I'll look out for skill. Mm. And I think it's until we start to value these things that's when we put that's when we are going to get people. For instance, if someone had studied maybe from Covenant University or from Harvard and you come back and you realize that your passion is plumbing, typically people are going to look down on you. Yeah. You know? So but why do you have to look down on on, on, on a person like that? No, but you or, can't look down on the person. That's what I'm trying to say. You see, because it's Are you different. serious? Of yeah, course. No, you, no. no. Oh, people no. will tell you you it's spent all... Do you know how much it is to go to Harvard? No. Yeah. You go to Harvard. difference That's in what I'm your saying. Delivery. It, it, not only even your delivery, even your confidence. Let yes. me tell you something. The biggest problem I have with polytechnic students in this country, it is they don't have self-esteem. I've dealt... I've, I've interacted with them. When they're talking, their head is down. Do you understand? There's no mm -hmm. the, that confidence, and again, it goes back to that dichotomy or whatever it is they call it, where you know you discriminate um, polytechnic graduates, you know, mm -hmm. and all of that. But you see those things, right? It gets to them. So if the government is truly serious about creating curriculum that can put food on the tables of Nigerians, mm -hmm. the seriousness to that for me, when you tell me you're serious, is you will go back to our technical schools and you go and revamp them. Because if you revamp those technical schools, they'll, right, they'll be proud, them, they'll be proud of where you start they're to have, from. Yes, you start to have, and not only that, then you must set a standard. You understand? Mm -hmm. Minimum, you graduate from this school, you are graduating as a plumber. This is the minimum entry level you can pay those people. And these things exist. Do you understand? It's just that mm -hmm. it exists in trickles. Mm. Right, so if we start to standardize these things, right, the same thing with uh, what's it called your um, vulcanizer, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, whilst you'll be pay if you go to a, a standard um tire store, do you pay what you pay those people on the roadside? No, so there is gradual overhauling that is happening in the system. But you see, for us to grow quicker and move faster, mm -hmm. the government must now take it as priority to say, you know what. First of all, let's focus on all our technical schools. But you know, let's the, revamp them. Let's bring what's it called so um, here is standards what. in terms of um, um, equipment and all of those things to be able mm -hmm. to get these people to be at that level. Then, when you are employing them, pay them what they are worth. So here is what I'm thinking, right? Because let's not forget this informal education, or like Mary, like you mentioned, the, the apprenticeship system that has been there in Ibo land for a very long time. Like, for instance, if, if a, a, an Ibo man who, is, who works in mechanic raises somebody else who works in the mechanic, right? 
and you end up choosing, oh, you would rather go to a proper mechanic workshop and maybe pay them 200000 for fixing your car. Meanwhile, you can pay the roadside mechanic who knows what they are doing. You can pay them, let's say, like 55000 naira or thereabout. Do you understand? Why would we choose to look down on that particular roadside mechanic who is excellent in what he does and say that Delivery. that is not... Well, no, what, no, what do you mean? What do you mean? I Delivery. said he is excellent yes. in what he does. Me. No, see, no, wait. Point. He is excellent in what he does. So I'm how do we rate you up, that on. he's not successful? My point is not even about looking down on the roadside. My mm -hmm. point is that can we get to the stage where we standardize every road, every roadside mechanic? Do you yeah. understand? Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Where the government will provide a decent, you know, so which, like, which also it, it still comes back to maybe delivery is not the right word. It's not, the, but yeah. then the, it, that would boost their confidence. So you imagine understand. that guy that would change their, their perspective on mm -hmm. how, how to, you know, go about it, you know, service. They would be, they would take it as a job. Do you understand? Because you know they, they're just doing it like, anyhow, anyhow, it's just what I'm doing. Sorry. But imagine if, you know, a guy, you park to um, fix your tire, the guy is analyzing to you, oh, madam, this is what is wrong with this. This is what I will do. You know, just, just a little, you know, touch to it. Trust me, if that it guy will hit our pockets, it, it will hit our pockets, but you will know that I like paying for <laughs> a good service. So listen, I like a system, I get your point, very valid point. However, I like a system of governance or a retail system that gives me options. Right? Mm. So if the government makes everything have a workshop and shall let us still have our option. No, no, no. No, 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 there's there's a car wash shop that you got and you're spending like 150 dollars to wash your car. Mm. There's a car wash shop you enter and you're spending 30 dollars. Mm. Do you understand? So I'm just saying that whatever regulation that if it's in the future for them, they should still remember like you know. <laughs> so let me explain uh -huh. what I mean. So for instance, if we had this very skilled mechanic that is great at his job, right? Mm -hmm. Can we begin to identify those people and raise more skilled people? Then we must be ready to pay. Sanzi, mm -hmm. we have to be ready to pay. You can't change this, the narrative. It, because again, it is also the way it is approached. So I have, I have a, a, a carpenter that I bring in from the north all the time. Before now, just do small, 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 small jobs. Now, you know, I am happy to see that he takes on jobs in millions. This was somebody I never dreamt of that he could do anything. Mm. But it was also because of the way I first of all recalibrated his brain. Yeah. Standardized his now brain. How far he you can understand? Go with so it. it is hitting my pocket too because I have to pay him the premium price. But guess mm -hmm. what? It has changed his approach to work. So let me tell you something. If we truly want to standardize things, right, and mm -hmm. stop all of these things that we're seeing where we're fi uh, finding. Uh, people going into robbery and all of that. Let us even see even basic skills, you know, and that's where you now start seeing that people will stop cutting corners. But let so, me take our uh, our okay. caller for the day, Joe. Sorry, youngest old man. <laughs> Good evening, no. Are you there? Hello, is it there? Sorry, you. Go ahead, Sansi. Yeah. So I mean, I get your point on standardization. However, okay, I'll give you an example of the spare parts market hmm. in the Hello? East, right? Hello, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, oh yeah, go ahead, quickly, oh. Yes, you see, this uh, discussion today is quite uh, confusing, though. But however, I, I just want to put something in. You see, I still believe that in whatever we do in this country, especially in Nigeria. We should not look at how it's been done abroad because most of our things comes with kind of tradition and the way we've been brought up and how it works for us. Every Nigerian know when to do, what to do and how to do at a certain time. If you or oh, anytime you are going to the market, I don't know the market that you go that you get it cheap. I don't know the market you go that you get it cost there, but the services will be better. That place you get it cheaper, maybe you need to even cross the gutter to assess it and maybe it will not be as neat as the other place. But however, you still have a choice to choose whatever you want to shop, any place you want to shop. So it is with every other 
saying we want to do. Even the organizer, we don't want to go get to cheap and costlier. But the major thing I want to start is that creating a level environment for any page of business in this country is very, very important. So whether you are from the polytechnic or whatever, you come out, you want to do something, and those people are, just like you said, they are being looked down on so much that they don't even really don't see that those people are the only people that, that when they are coming out from school, they have a kind of hope that they can be self-employed immediately. They go straight to what they learn, what they learn in school, and start making money from it. But you know, in this our country, if you don't carry all the book, 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 or in books, nobody see you as educated. But for me, I believe that if they can create a learning environment and make sure that it's well matched, that everybody will be seen as a graduate, graduate and graduate, whether for polytechnic or university, it will boost confidence. Therefore, we that are the we that have patronized them, we already know where to go to get it cheaper. So we make our choice that we choose whatever we want to choose. I think that's all I need to Thank you. I know that we should go and get this book, Scale at Speed. That book helps a lot in what we're discussing today. I don't even know if I've read it before. What's the name of the book? That book, Scale at Speed. You will see some of this topic coming in that uh, book. Thank you very much. Thank you, youngest old man. We'll look for your oh, book. I don't the, think I've the seen truth that book. Is, I didn't what, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> What he said, all right, what he said makes a lot of sense because there is like different kinds of intelligence. There is emotional intelligence and really in any service you're rendering, the basics you'd need is intelligence, how to deal with people. You know, there is that, how so to deal with I've people is, that. Is, is basic. And then there is now the intelligence of whatever field that your God has given you talent, whether musical intelligence or natural intelligence or technical mm. intelligence so what would you would you would you say that the that like um the topic again i'm just saying <laughs> that the curriculum the thing yeah. about go to school spend four years in school and go okay, through so strike and whatnot i don't not think it's relevant anymore. anymore what i'm saying is instead of that create or or rather give priority or or something to the polytechnic store it doesn't even have to be polytechnic is maybe to work something now yeah, I'm just making my point. <laughs> the, the point I'm trying to help Sansi to understand, and youngest old man, I know that we are used to cheap, cheap things in this life. I, ca I can bet you for free. It took me a long, wait now. It took me a long time to stop. I really enjoy the fact that I can go up. But you see, the truth is that I'm not one of those people that like the headache of pricing. How much less? How much less? I don't have that time. When I beg you, how much is the discount you're going to give me? If you don't answer me, I pay you. <laughs> I go. But I'm saying that if we really want to change and upgrade the lives of a lot of people in Nigeria, yeah. we must standardize things. And co standardizing things come at a cost. It also comes so let me territory. Explain. Wait now, let me explain. Okay. If your government tomorrow decides to say they want to standardize plumbing, for instance, as a profession, mm -hmm. it means that they would, they would, they would um, what's it called, set up an, a standardized institute of plumbing. Do you understand? That people go there. So anybody that graduates from that place, first mm -hmm. of all, there is a value chain. They are building houses everywhere. Wait, would you not rather have a professional pay that premium than go and be solving leakage problem one day? Do you understand what I'm saying? what I'm saying, Owa. Eh? No, here is my point. That standardization has to do with territory. If you standardize it and say, okay, ne 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 ne, the average plumber do. <laughs> <laughs> then, then that means look, 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 right? So if 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 a, a, a plumber in Lagos earns about let's say five hundred thousand a month based on this is a plumbing office and whatnot, right? In the east, you no go work because people are not making up to that amount. Okay, let so me the standardization it. for me is like it has to be territorial. Okay, territorial. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't feel like I'm getting headache. <laughs> My head is hurting me. <laughs> But I think this was a good conversation. We'll try to bring it back. Come here, I'm confused. I will try to bring it back. Even youngest old man say we confuse her. All right, so thank you so much, Sandy. Thank you, Mary. Before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles. And we show Africa you can interact with us further. Drop your comment and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Oh my goodness, our educational curriculum in Nigeria lack relevance due to shortage of specialized teachers on conducive learning environment, poor infrastructure facilities, and lack of funds in Nigerian certificates and are more appreciated than the capability. 
Oh God. And it's sorry, a quick one from Benson. Mm. He says, Good evening, ladies. One of the men that did the interlocking stones at the Palm Shopping Mall recited at the 1004 penthouse. Fundamentally, it was a polytechnic training he had. Mm. Benson. Okay, we'll see you guys tomorrow. What did we, our quote for today? I'm sure you go and find it. It's, it's from the governor of the Boeing State, <laughs> which see makes a lot of sense. <laughs>